have our eight cups of fruit all cooked down. You saw the picture earlier of the raw fruit in the pan. It's now been cooked down. I pulled off a few cups of the juice because there was just too much juice. Then I added one cup of maple syrup. And now we are going to use our stick blender or immersion blender to chop it up and make a puree. So, pardon the noise. I'll be back when it's done. Okay, it is now blended. Set this over here in the drip catcher. And as you can see, it's a nice, smooth puree. Now what we're going to do is I have these little trays, they call them fruit roll-up trays, and we're going to put a, a goodly amount in here and make it, uh, get rid of as many of the bubbles as we can, make it smooth, and then we're going to take it out and put it in the dehydrator. So that's our next step is getting it in here. You don't want it too small an amount because if you do, when you dry, oh, you won't get a fruit leather. You'll just get this crispy something that'll break into powder. So you want it fairly deep, maybe a quarter of an inch deep, half an inch at the most. You scoop it in. Then what I do is I just kind of wiggle it back and forth and let it fill in the tray. And it looks like there's not enough right along here because it's not filling in so easily. So we'll just add a little more. And we'll shake it out again. Now, let's move this over and do one more. And then we'll put them in the dehydrator. These are a wonderful invention. I tried doing this without and using parchment paper and binder clips and all kinds of things to make flat surfaces that would dry a liquid in my dehydrator and it just didn't work. And I found these on Amazon and I have never regretted buying them. They are just wonderful. They weren't made for my kind of dehydrator but they work very well. Okay, now let's shake it again and see if we can even it out a little bit. This also allows any bubbles that are inside to come to the surface. And there we are. Now we'll go put these in, and then we'll be back tomorrow when it's all dehydrated to show you what we've got. Hi, and welcome back. This is the last step in what we did with our plums. Earlier in the video, you saw that we made the plum puree and put it on our drying racks and put it in the dehydrator. Now I'm going to show you what we do once the dehydration has happened. In this tray is the dried dehydrated plum puree. And what I've got is parchment paper and I'm going to put a very, very light sprinkling of powdered sugar on there just so that it doesn't stick to the parchment paper. Then I'm going to peel this up. By the way, halfway through the dehydrating, we flipped it over. So this was the bottom, now it's the top. Set it down in the middle of where you sprinkle the powdered sugar and do another very, very light sprinkling. What you're trying to do is just put a light amount of sugar between the paper and the fruit so it doesn't stick. Fold up the end like that. And all we do is roll it. There we go. Once you've got a roll, I take a serrated knife and cut it in half. Now the reason I do this is because I store these in a half gallon jar and they fit better. And sometimes I do have to cut them apart with the scissors. Lower them down in there. And then the next time your kids want a snack, your hubby wants a snack, or even you want a snack, you've got this wonderful, great-tasting fruit leather that you could just 
pull out, pull a little bit off, and eat. It's so much better than candy, and it tastes just as good in my opinion. So one last time, let's finish it real quick. I'll show you again what I do. Sprinkle out some powdered sugar. Take your puree off the tray and lie it down in the powdered, powdered sugar. Put a little bit on the powdered sugar on the fruit. Fold it up. Roll it up. And then cut it in half and put it in the jar.